This video is brought to you by the Battle Zoo Bestiary, a new book with over 100 award winning monsters and other resources from Paizo lead designer Mark Cypher. Sign up today at kickstarter.rollforcombat.com and join the campaign when it launches on August 31st. <laughs> Hey everybody, today I have for you a quick preview of the upcoming Secrets of Magic rulebook for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Two quick notes before I get too deep into this. First, I should let you know that I was provided a PDF copy of the book in advance by Paizo, and second, this will be a preview, meaning I will be providing an overview of the book's contents, but will not be sharing any of my own opinions about the quality or value of the book. And I also will not be sharing any of the mechanics involved with the book's new features as I feel a full review or a deep dive video will be better suited for an exploration of those mechanics. So let's dive into this preview and I will be posting a full review of the book shortly after its official release on August 25th. Secrets of Magic is 258 pages from cover to cover and retails for $49.99 US. The PDF version may also be purchased online for $14.99. The first chapter, Essentials of Magic, explains what magic is and how it functions in the Pathfinder setting. The core of the chapter breaks down and explains concepts such as the four magical traditions, the four essences of magic, and the eight schools of magic. And the later portion of the chapter provides 18 new character backgrounds, including Academy Dropout, Anti-Magical, Astrologer, Chosen One, Eidolon Contact, False Medium, Genie Blessed, Magical Experiment, Magical Merchant, Magical Misfit, Musical Prodigy, Occult Librarian, Plant Whisperer, Street Preacher, Seer of the Dead, Song of the Deep, Student of Magic, and Time Traveler. Some of those, like Chosen One and Time Traveler, are listed as rare and should not be assumed to be available in all games. The second chapter of the book introduces two new character classes, the Magus and Summoner. Magus is a sort of hybrid class that mixes swordplay with spellcasting. They're arcane prepared spellcasters whose featured ability is Spell Strike. This allows the Magus to cast an attack spell onto a melee weapon or unarmed attack and use it as a means to deliver the spell, essentially combining the melee weapon attack and the spell into one. Summoners are spiritually connected to otherworldly creatures known as Eidolons and use their powers to anchor these creatures on the material plane. Secrets of Magic provides rules for nine Eidolon types, Angel, Anger Phantom, Beast, Construct, Demon, Devotion Phantom, Dragon, Fey, Plant, and Psychopomp. The third chapter of the book provides a collection of new spells. I try to keep these previews brief so I won't go into details in this video other than to say that this chapter accounts for about 75 pages and presents more than 200 new spells including focus spells and rituals. Chapter 4 of the book introduces new magic items. This includes 17 pages of what I'll call standard magic items that are similar to those found in the core rules. This includes new consumables like talismans and potions, as well as new weapons, adventuring gear, and decks of magical cards such as a cantrip deck, deck of illusions, and deck of mischief. In addition to those familiar magical items, the book also introduces six new types of magical items. Fulus are paper talismans often found in Tian Sha, and this book provides 16 different Fulus. Grimoires are magical spellbooks, and nine different types are provided here. Secrets of Magic also provides stats for a few magical tattoos, as well as rules for spellcasters to create their own personal staves that they can imbue with their choice of spells. Spell Catalysts, which are special material components that amplify or modify spells that are cast with them, are also included. For example, using a Fire Starter Pellet as the material component for casting the Fireball spell adds persistent damage to the spell's usual effects. And last, this chapter includes a new kind of permanent talisman that is not consumed on use called a Spell Heart. 
The fifth and final chapter of the book is titled Book of Unlimited Magic and provides a number of optional rules. The introduction of the book refers to these optional rules as expansions and states that they are not intended as universal rules and should not be assumed to be appropriate for every game table. Several of these new expansions are tagged with a rarity trait to help GMs determine if it is appropriate for their game. The first of these new systems is Cathartic Magic, which allows a spellcaster to use the power of their emotions to fuel their magic. For example, special abilities that trigger when under the Frightened Condition, or Pride abilities that trigger after rolling a critical failure. And this section does include a new archetype to use this magic called the Cathartic Mage. The second expansion is Elementalism. At 10 pages long, this is the longest of the new systems and includes three new druid orders. Those would be the Flame Order, Stone Order, and Wave Order, 10 new druid feats, 8 new druid focus spells, and 6 new stances for monks. Also included here is Pathfinder 2nd Edition's first class archetype, the Elementalist. The third new system is Flexible Preparation. This provides a new way of managing spell slots that is a mix of prepared and spontaneous spellcasting. The Flexible Spellcaster class archetype is available to prepared spellcasting classes like clerics, druids, witches, and wizards, and allows them to function more like a spontaneous spellcaster at the expense of having fewer spell slots per day. The next new system is Geomancy. Geomancers gain special benefits when the spells they cast have a trait that corresponds to their environment. For example, casting a spell with the fire trait while in a desert, or casting a spell that has the plant trait while in a forest. The fifth new system is for Ley Lines. This is marked as being rare and allows spellcasters to locate and tap into invisible veins of magical energy to enhance their powers. The next new system is for pervasive magic. This includes areas where magic is so common that all creatures naturally have some ability to use it. All characters in a pervasive magic campaign gain access to spellcasting feats such as basic, expert, and master spellcasting regardless of their class. Shadow magic is the next new system and it provides the shadow caster archetype. This section also provides guidance for shadow animal companions like shadow hounds and also for shadow familiars. The eighth new system is for soul seeds, which are a special kind of magical relic that binds with their wielders. The book provides 12 different soul seeds for GMs to use. Next are soul forged armaments, which allow characters to form a spiritual bond with a specific item like a favored weapon or a suit of armor. These items become imbued with essence powers and can be summoned from a pocket dimension when they're needed. The book also provides rules for the Rune Lord class archetype, and this alters the way that schools of magic work for members of the wizard class. Next is the True Name system, which grants bonuses for discovering and invoking a creature's true name. And the last system is Wellspring Magic, which reminds me of Wild Magic from other systems. It allows members of the Wellspring Mage archetype to potentially cast spells of increased power, but at the risk of losing control of the magics they wield and causing a surge of magic with unpredictable results. So that's a quick walkthrough of Secrets of Magic. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of the kind of contents you will find in this book. Make sure you come back after August 25th for my full review and I'll share my thoughts, my opinions, whether or not I would recommend people to buy this book. I'll cover all of those things at that time. And until then, thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming.